Hello, and I have a question for everybody here. What do you call a typo on a tombstone? A grave mistake? Yes, you do. That's right. That's how we're starting things yeah. off today. We are back from continuing adventures. Yeah, uh, out. Everyone, <laughs> see, uh, with that, everyone here in the game and anyone who watches, you take one point of psychic damage from yeah. that. And, I feel like it was more than one. Yeah, you know, well... You, you, you lucked out. Um, yeah, Jordan, I know you have some uh, really cool announcement, I believe, do you not? Yeah, uh, yeah, there's there's some stuff. There's some stuff going on. Uh, so, cool things. Uh, first off, uh, shouting out a good buddy of mine who I got to do a four-part uh, episode on uh, on his show. Uh, the podcast is called No Latency. They're a cyberpunk red uh, show. Uh, my buddy, my buddy Paris runs, uh, runs and GMs that as well as does a lot of animation, uh, for their podcast as well. Cause they've started to do animations of, uh, some of their episodes, which is really cool, but there'll be around, uh, around Christmas time, there'll be a four part, I believe four part, uh, side quest, uh, that'll happen that I get to be on and have some, some fun shenanigans with the regular, uh, no latency crew, uh, which I'm really excited for. Uh, yeah, that's the, that's the big one right now. I just want to throw a little more love to Smoking Glue Guns, Whitney, who mm -hmm. was part of our Unicorn Island one-shot and was very nice to give some love to us. Uh, if you go and check out, uh, if you look up Smoking Glue Guns anywhere on the internet, she makes custom hand-poured dice. They are so friggin' cool. And you can see some of her videos, how she's made, like, step-by-step, -step, where just there are full-on dioramas embedded in like a d20 just uh the stranger things one she made just blows my mind oh, so yeah. yeah smoking glue guns uh worth the money i'm going to spend some stuff there speaking we're of it. money oh Jamie. i believe that was my cue hi <laughs> hey y'all uh we have a ko-fi ko-fi slash dice scalers and you can send us monies and uh, help us with the stream and defraying costs and maybe make maybe making it so I can actually use Discord on my goddamn computer, which I currently cannot. <laughs> and if I seem cranky, that's why. And uh, with your donation, you would get access to our personal Discord chat where we talk about um, the campaign and send each other stupid memes and you would be able to ask us anything and questions would most likely be answered by Nate and most likely would not be honest and truthful but you know it could happen he could accidentally tell the truth he could <laughs> once in a while it would only be accidentally tell the truth yeah yeah so that is once again and it's maybe on the screen right now it is on the screen right now Oh, fancy Kofi! That is, <laughs> but I'm not gonna sell it. You can see it right there. I'm, yeah, this is, oh, this is right over there. Is uh, it, uh, I don't uh, remember uh, where I am. There. Yeah. Or... Uh, it, you're, it, it'd still be to your your left. No, nope. sorry, you're right. <laughs> Leveling up, I. <laughs> I usually joke about us being a well-oiled machine, but now I'm actually a partially oiled machine. Um, it's just the wrong kind yeah. of oil. It, it is. <laughs> anyway, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Oil and, in your car. Oh, <laughs> done. Ladies, gentlemen, and others, and money, please. Oh, we love it. We love it. We love it. <laughs> Jamie is cute overload. Well, Jamie is big cranky right now. Well, it's helpful that you play a barbarian then be able to channel that into you know <laughs> you know what your first use of, of rage during this adventuring day you won't have to mark off like you can channel, <laughs> you can channel that rage into Siobhan and we'll call it good get you one free rage yeah I think I think that's fair with all the headache that you've dealt with with that computer nonsense in the past couple days you get a free rage out of it yay so with that you all had recently completed a heist on a train at uh, request of one Marshal Elijah Bicker. Stealing the manifest from Castian Aloro, high-ranking member of the census, to find out exactly, possibly, 
why census members were so suddenly showing up in the vagabond assemblage when this arcane reservoir had literally just been discovered. The uh, item was taken, but in the process, the dusk elf Olaphorus, which you had had a previous run in with, showed up and attempted to wrestle it away from Garnet. Garnet won out, escaping with it while invisible, and a combat took place. Reba was nearly slain in the process, but thankfully, partially through being a goddamn half-orc and just deciding, uh, I'm not going to fall down yet. And then with the arrival of Kira and Castian and crew, were able to make sure that Reba was okay. Siobhan was in the process of coming up upon Alaphorus from behind, and he decided discretion was a better part of valor, teleporting away. Before returning the item to Castian, Phoenix uh, pointed out that it was a fake the whole time. You used one of the plot points you were given for this heist to give a fake version back to Castian and take the actual one back to the City of Virtue where you reunited with Marshal Elijah Bicker. Through some use of identification magic, uh, and found that there was an illusory script within the book itself. You waited a couple days, hunkering down in the worthy repose at the request of Marshal Bicker to not go anywhere just in case. And sure enough, two days later, the words appeared saying, Olaphorus got sloppy. He's in over his head, and now he's going to be punished. The upright thought they could make this move, and I will be their obstacle. This is not the way. The Hollow Keeper commands it. So you are all here in the City of Virtue, uh, also having just leveled up, so we'll see what level six brings to everyone. But as you read those words, uh, gathered in this private conference room in company of Marshall Vicker, he looks to you all. I'll be honest, I don't know exactly what in the uh, hells all that means. But I'm guessing it's something that uh, he didn't want a whole lot of other folks to know. We'll have to do with that what we can. If uh, if in you're looking for more information, some uh, folks to check in with, might be a place here in town you can ask around a bit just poking your head into a tavern on the east side of town the proud raven uh, proprietress of that place uh, Sonia she may know a thing or two just just tell her you know me and uh, she'll do right by you fortunately uh, well, unfortunately, I think this thing is going to be where we part ways for a bit. As much as I appreciate and support you all, I do. Well, I do have a town I got to run that uh, got to get back to. And, uh, I suppose I owe you payment, don't I? And did anybody including check in? Expenses. Including expenses. Uh, what was that? Was it 100 gold each? Just the uh, the introduction to the tomato bisque was nearly payments enough. Oh, how come no. you're not in charge of negotiation? I am not in charge of negotiation. I'll just give him a hug. <laughs> oh. Oh, well, okay. Well, I guess I guess we didn't know each other like that. But no, sure. It's oh, bring it in there, fellow. Hey, you work out, don't you? All right. I do. He has to squat down a little bit because he's he's tall and you're not. And so for the payment, was that 100 gold a piece, I believe, or was it more than that? I'm looking. Yes, it in my notes. 
Mm -hmm. is, is that our DM or is that the character asking? <laughs> the, the character knows, but the DM seeing, if you remember. Because I knew you were going to do this. Mm -hmm. I took all the notes last time, and so I was like, I'm not going to do it this time. <laughs> like, oh, I don't know anything. Uh, 50 gold each to find out what's happening, 100 gold each if we're able to ascertain and apprehend the original four. Oh, no, wait, that was back in Shimmerstone. Yeah. Pardon me. It was. It was. It was in a different notebook. <laughs> the, the, the DM will be very honest with you, and the notebook that was in uh, unfortunately got water damaged, and that page got ruined because I write in ink. And oh, so you lied when you said that you were just testing us. Oh no, I am actually testing. The thing is, like, I don't know that I have it in a different place. That's not like do you guys have it. It's a different notebook. Oh God, did I find it? I'm pretty sure it was one one hundred each. That sounds very, very. I mean, that was definitely the the right amount for the uh, for the mine work. I just don't know what it was for this one. I feel like we should get yeah. an upgrade since then, though. Yeah, I think it was. I mean, I think it was it was one. It, it was I think it was one fifty each, uh, plus expenses, and then an additional an additional payment if we didn't get caught and an additional additional payment if we actually got it rather than just copying it i just don't have those numbers in front of me because i have too many notebooks that's fine well in the sense we don't have that one handy we'll we'll go with a nice round number and he will slide a bag across the table so that should there about uh, square us up and uh have a settle Find 150 platinum in there. Should cover expenses, cover your fee, and can split it up amongst you how you see fit, but you've done well. I'll be in touch, and best of luck to y'all. There's definitely more to this. I don't know what yet. Stay safe and stick together. And he'll put his hat on, tip his cap, and he'll begin moseying out the door. He actually stops at the door and he looks back to Kira. Meant what I said, kid. Thank you. Take care of yourself. I don't know about anybody else, but I could use some tea. Tea? Anybody? I'll take you some tea. I'm gonna go. And I, I head off to the kitchen to try and procure some tea. You can. I'm not having tea right now. <laughs> go for a cup of tea. Garnet's gonna follow uh, Kira. Um, and before they get to the kitchen, but out of your sight of everybody else, and present. Kira with a little package. Um, it's just a couple of pieces of paper that is uh, a copy of all of the nice things um, that Cassian had written about Kira, and it's tied with a little bow. And uh, Kira's name is written in her best calligraphy that she ever learned in like those two days, um, except there's a heart over the eye. <laughs> I, you, you, this was for you because you asked for it. Yeah, uh, th thank you. I, uh... And Kira just drops down and gives you a giant hug. Oh. She's really excited you're at her level and gives you a little peck on the cheek. <gasps> I, I oh, hope it makes you happy. <laughs> I'm sorry if we have to kill him later because he, he turns out to be a bad guy. Yeah, uh, yeah, that... That's why. But we don't know yet. We don't know what the Hollow Keeper is, but it's okay. Yeah. Mm hmm. Anyway, and he just quickly stands up and just, so, tea, yes. Uh, let's, let's get, let's grab some, some tea, yes. Uh. Yep. <laughs> and it's 
you're easily Great able to time. find where tea is. Like, tea is complimentary here at the Worthy Repose, as this is, as you you know, a fairly nice establishment. Uh, the marshal has you paid through tonight. Beyond that, it's going to be on your own to pay for it. But yeah, tea and coffee are complimentary. I assume Mannix has made great use of that complimentary coffee two at a time. Two at a time. Yeah, they they've gotten to know you at this point, where they just, they just see you come in and they just they are they grab two mugs and they just kind of watch. Is he coming this way? Okay, no, we don't need that yet. But they're they're ready at all times for you. They they know they know. Uh, Siobhan has been muttering about how we should really like figure out how to like ask for money that's going to easily divide by six and working out division on paper, at which point she realizes that 150 does divide cleanly by six. It's like, cool. <laughs> so it's 25 platinum each. Cool. We should probably grab it now before uh, Garnet comes back and, you know, it disappears. Uh, two things that two of you would know about this city, as it was previously mentioned, Siobhan, you know this is the city where Calm Finnegan was given you as an infant. And Garnet, you would know that in this city, there is a well-known uh, gnomish, well, magical tinkerer that has a shop that is known far and wide to anybody who loves the tinkering arts. It is a place known as Dippletop's Tinkery, and you would know that that is here within the City of Virtue, should you d so decide to find said uh, magical shop. Garnet cannot wait to show this to Kohaku. Yes. But yeah, the uh, the name of the uh, inn that the marshal me mentioned, the Proud Raven, that's that's here if you all go choose to, choose to look in that direction. But otherwise, what all is it you want to do? Oh, Kira, I needed to ask. How much of this information have you sent back to Sordal of, of what you've learned so far? None yet. Because okay. I haven't I haven't really had the time because Kira hasn't really had the time to compose his thoughts on what to do. Cool, cool, cool. Uh he's just kinda in shock and it's fine and everything's yep. fine. That's fair. <laughs> So uh, the rest of us who are not Kira or um, Garnet, or has Garnet come back by now? Uh, she's going to help with the tea. Okay. Um, so I'm going <laughs> to... Uh, Siobhan turns to uh, uh, Mannix and says, uh, So does the name Halakeeper mean anything to you? Does the name Hollowkeeper mean anything? Uh, you can give me a either history or religion check. Does it make any sense for Pohaku to roll on that as well? No, for for Pohaku, you've never heard it. Uh, that is a oh, yeah. seventeen on history. Ooh. Seventeen on history. Yeah, Mannix. As as you sit there and think about it, you go. Yeah, I've I've heard this. The Hollow Keeper, it's it's a religious boogeyman story. It's make sure that you deliver your tithe on time and that you pray properly. Because if you don't, the Hollow Keeper will get you. And so you've you you've only heard it in the sense of a story to to scare children. It's it's like the whole idea of, in Catholicism, like, oh, you have to repent all your sins or you're going to burn in a lake of fire forever. And this is a much more of a 
here in, in on the material plane in your, in your physical life the idea of this this all-knowing tithe collector that if you haven't paid your tithe that the hollow keeper will come and get you and they'll collect it in blood and that's that's the story you've heard, but it's a boogeyman. It's made up, I'm getting at least as far cramped. as you've always known. Too much. Like, Casey, I'm getting Krampus vibes and Repo Man vibes, and I love it. But you go! Repo Man! See, I was thinking Kaiser Sose. It's like, that's what I'm getting. So if he... Okay, so go ahead. <laughs> what does... What does Manic say? The heart of the Baba Yaga, the Hala Keeper, however you want to call it. Baba Yaga. It's something you, you scare small children with. That's about it. And it's rather gruesome to be bringing such a story to a child, but you don't bring it lightly. It's meant to keep people in line at the end of the day. One other piece you do also remember from it, Mannix, is no one knows what the Hollow Keeper looks like because the face is hidden behind a very shapeless white mask. <gasps> There's one part. The, the visage of the Hollow Keeper is that of a white mask. Sounds familiar. You mean like the one that Garnet found way back in, uh, where the hell were we? The Harvest Festival. Uh, Harmony Creek. Right. I live there, so I haven't forgotten, naturally. But <laughs> I lived in the and yeah, Mannix, that that tracks as you think about that mask you know that we found. You're going. That does sound like the mask that we found before. Cool. We've got to worry about the boogeyman now. Marvelous. Did uh, did Mannix ever hear um, as a kid? Did was he ever on the receiving end of such stories like? Not so much as, as a kid for you, Bannix, because your family was always very good about the tithe. Um, you know, many, many noble families in the Empire have their dark and dirty secret, secrets. The, the Soul family, no exception. You, you have some of yours, but they were always good about the tithe required to, to the church in, in the name and memory of Balder. They never faltered on that. You may have had some questions as a child about it, but your family, they never told the story of the Hollow Keeper because they were just matter of fact about why it's done. It was, this is what keeps the Empire running. If, if everything runs just fine and everyone's provided for, then nobody gets too fussy about those of us who have more resources than others. The best way to keep a populace happy is to provide for all their basic needs. Well, in the empire, basic needs for all citizens are taken care of. So <laughs> why do they care that you have a bit more? Plus, you know, even though you guys were nobles and, and you're wealthy, Within the Thanaburian Empire, there is sort of a cap on where your wealth can go. Like, you can't amass it endlessly like, <laughs> like a dragon. <laughs> All of these looks to the camera are to Jeff Bezos, who will never see this. Right, right? yeah. No, 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 the Thanamarian Empire, or as I put it, is all oppression bad? Because... <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Everyone's provided for, and there's a cap on wealth, but you're required to, to worship a certain way. So there you have it. But yeah, it, it, as far as that, there was never a, oh, you had better, you had better do this or else. Like, it was just understood, this is the way of doing things. And, and for noble families, there was less of a needing to tell hollow keeper type boogeyman stories simply because growing up in nobility, you learned just pomp and circumstance for certain events. And, oh, okay, if we're meeting with, with a, another noble family, you have to behave this way. These are the type of pleasantries. These are the, the greetings. So you grew up being very used to jumping through social hoops. So even though you have a bit of a rebellious streak in you, as we've seen, you know how to put on the proper airs when needed. Exactly. Wait, so these super religious people are hypocrites? That's what? Weird. Do as I say or the invisible person's going to... And if he explained all of this, uh, Siobhan's going to turn to Reba and be like, uh, well, to be honest, up here, we're under the impression that's what the entire census is like. But you're Satan. Yeah, this Regular. seems par for the course. Well, I, I, you know, I can't help but notice that the few members I've met are not actually foaming at the mouth and monsters. Overt. I mean, some of them brought a monster. Does that count? But they weren't the census. They weren't. I know, but what? Ugh, so sketchy. Coming so, from the woods that everyone believes is the boogeyman already. These things are rarely what they are purported to be. As long as you keep your head about you. The boogeyman is usually more of a useful illustration. We've learned that I'm apparently a, uh, a, a mythical creature. Okay, well. I mean, as far as I know, there's two of us in the world, but, or in the continent. Anyway, the point being, There are so many things we don't know. There's so many things that are turning out to exist that we thought didn't and not exist that we thought did. Shite, where's my cool. team? I mean, that's just exciting, isn't it? You know what? You're right. Life still has some wonder and mysticism after all. It just, you know... Also seems to commit genocide and and a lot of really un for and a lot of undeath and some unfortunate things. But you know, whimsy too. Wonder. <laughs> the one what might be whimsical and wondrous might be fuck all terrifying for the next. So. We contain multitudes. I, for one, absolutely find uh, uh, Siobhan, who is apparently, you know, also from a fairy tale, to be both frightening and whimsical. Thank you. I feel like you're impugning the honor of a disco court pick F right now, and I'll not have it. <laughs> I would never. I would never dare. Nothing is more sacred. And I don't say that lightly as a heathen. This is true. Disco court kick F is, uh, is quite special. I would like to be a cleric in the service of the temple of disco court kick F. 
That's fair. That is uh, in extremely fair, and I think it is a worthy thing to uh, to wish. Here we go, starting new religions. <laughs> So, Menix, just trying to understand uh, from Kira's perspective, to hear that uh, his uh, uh, lifelong friend, mentor, father figure, what have you, is, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, beholden, working for the, the Hallow Keeper, is this... Uh, something he's likely to be upset about or would this be a great honor not sure how to read the kid it's difficult because from what i know he's rather um he's proud but i can't see him being all the all uh all that enthralled and particularly happy about being beholden to anyone or anything for any particular reason uh, that's out of his control. He's a man of honor and he does not take those associations lightly. But when it's something that he doesn't have a lot of uh, say in and is out of his hands, I can imagine he approaches such a thing with a, a bit of a chip on his shoulder. So it may be something we want to approach delicately. Or just fucking kick the door down and say, hey, what's all this about? Uh, I can't promise that's going to be the best approach. <laughs> no, that's not. Let's not do that. I'm looking around, trying to be like delicate approach. Yeah, that. Oh, none of us should say anything. None of us should say a thing. Garnet's the only one who might not be horrible. This may surprise you, but I can be delicate when I need to be. Wouldn't surprise me indeed, yeah. So Hucker just turns a look over towards Mannix. Just. Don't say that. You big sandy bastard. You wouldn't know delicate if it bit you in the face. <laughs> Shut your yap. You're gathering flies, lad. That's that's the exact silver tongue we were referring to. Yeah. I ain't got to be silver tongued with none of y'all. There's not a word I can say that's going to get you to believe I'm a kind and delicate soul. Isn't that the name of your cousin? Uh, S-O-L or S-O-U-L. Oh, oh, well done. Well done. Right about now. <laughs> what does your brother have to do with this? Oh. Boy, family out of this. <laughs> You're the one who brought up funk. Uh. Well, it's probably about this time that Kira gets back with the tea. Right about now? Yeah, right yes. about now. Oh, thank God, I'm like, please come save us. He's got the key. Check it out now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> I'm coming in fast. Yeah. I think he walks in, and then immediately we all just get awkwardly quiet. So, uh, we've got, we've got tea. A couple different it's hands. Done. Oh, also oh the darn it, that's amazing. Coffee. I need to praise you like I should. <laughs> Gerda just nods. Yes, you should praise me. And the tea. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, and Kira will just kind of like... Scones were going to be the weapon of choice. <laughs> yeah, we could play a game if we started to roll those scones. You yeah. know. Rolling scones. Uh, it's very tidily jokes. <laughs> um, as Garnet comes in with the scones, uh, Pohaku does take uh, some scones from her, 
uh, with one hand and with the other hand, hey, um, I was hoping you seem to be better with, like you care more than I do. Can you just, I think you would be, and he just takes out the 250 gold and just hands it to her. Yeah, okay. And she'll whip out a little notebook and write down 25 platinum Ohaku underneath the 50 gold Ohaku. Um, we'll, just, we'll just keep a tally and you let me know when you need it. She hides it quickly. You don't see where it goes. I like the picture that she's pulled out of pop, uh, pocket abacus. <laughs> I know it. This is this is art imitating life a little bit too much right now, but it's all good. <laughs> Not for long. <laughs> Garnet knows finances and Garnet knows business. She's like, yeah, I got this. I got I got it down. I know I know what's going on. And I would just like to put in a good word. Anybody who has the option to do so, marry somebody smarter than you. It's a really good decision. Marry somebody song. humble. It's sweet. I'm just looking expectantly at Bjorn. Like, <laughs> didn't you have the second one about somebody humble? I you missed you missed the boat on that one. Anyway, so the scones are blueberry, cranberry, raspberry, and we've got some butter and some clotted cream. What would anybody like? Strawberry and clotted cream, please. There you go. Amazing. And, and tea? Kira? Yeah. She probably needs tea to go uh, with that. We got, yeah, we got a... a, a Pretty okay black tea. I, I didn't recognize the name, but it seemed to be recommended highly. And then there's also a good chamomile and mm, caffeine tea. Fair, fair enough. And I'll start making some, uh, making some of the black tea. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah I'm all up for trying the thing that you don't know what it is. That sounds amazing. Yeah, Reba is fueled by caffeine, alcohol, and questionable decisions. So, Speaking and, of questionable decisions, Reba, a couple days ago, you were so excited to, like, go on the next heist. I was a little confused because I thought you were, like, trying to get away from that life, but, you, but maybe not. No. Are you serious? Because I think we should go find something else if you do, if you were serious. You know, I keep trying, and then I keep crawling back. What can I say? I uh I mean I I could be I could be convinced. I could be convinced. I feel like it's different now, you know? Like we're working I mean like I, it got me in a bit of trouble before. I'm not gonna lie, you know. But that was a good heist though. And it didn't get me in trouble. So Haku is going to turn with big eyes and just fold his hands underneath his chin. This sounds like a story. Oh, uh, no, I've already told you about my days with the Hell Towns and just, you know, raising hell and, and, and sometimes getting chased off like angry people with brooms very cartoonishly. Sometimes, you know, sometimes your girlfriend raises a drowger and it goes really bad. Shit happens. So as long as we don't raise a drowger, it's probably okay? Yeah. Kohaku casts a uh, minor illusion of a broom next to you. Reba. Oh, gosh! <laughs> it, it's, it's not moving. It's just it's just a minor illusion. It doesn't oh. move, but there's a broom next to you. <laughs> PTSD. I hit by so many of those. I mean, it's just a it's just a broom. Don't worry. It, it's just an, and he he dismisses the illusion. Wow, I I'm sorry. I I didn't think I would get such a reaction. I won't do that again. I'll Reba. take a sword any day over one of those. Good Reba, roll a wisdom save. A wisdom save? Okay. Yeah. 
I versus can do Groom, that. You'll, you'll probably be fine. We're, we're, we're just going to, you're throwing into the frightened condition right here. Yeah, don't fall. All right, for wisdom save, that is a 17. Oh, yeah, you're fine. Yeah. I got good wisdom. You do, you do. Despite the no thoughts head empty, your wisdom is quite high. <laughs> Who said stats had to make sense? That well, that intelligence score, on the other hand. That'll, yeah, it's a... We'll see how that susses out for you as we go along. I got street smart. You do, and I think it's well represented in your character and your stats. <laughs> That's great. I don't. <laughs> Which is also well represented in your character and your stats. Um, what time of day is it? How much, so I guess right how much now, of the day do we have left? You have most of the day left. It would be about late morning right now. So, actually, well, no, it would be, it would, it would be uh, early afternoon. It would be about tea time, hence the tea and scones. And pardon, just with the timeline, this is... Oh yeah, because this was like three days after the because we had to wait for the for the ink to show up. So. Correct. Okay. Okay. It is specifically the twenty sixth day in the month of Slattermoon. Okay. Um, before it gets too late, Pohaku and anyone else who wants to come, there's this really cool place that I've heard of um, that I really, really, really want to check out. It's great. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for those who aren't so excited about just whatever I suggest, <laughs> the Dimple Top Tinkery is kind of well-known, known place, and I really want to go. Does anyone else want to come? Could be fun. I'm down. All right. Cool. Let's go there and see what exciting things we can find. Uh, and it's... Oh, go ahead. I, I, I think I'll... Stay here if that's all right. You don't want to come? Is there anything you want me to find for you? Uh, that's a loaded question. Uh, I'm I'm just gonna hang out. Maybe we could find like some sort of like a tinkering of stoicism for you. You got some? Is that a just... thing? Remove my memory of the last week. Oh, I think that's called alcohol. Yeah, I've chosen to respect your decisions, but they're right. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be a little. Do you want to talk about weeks. it, Kira? I, 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 ju I just need to be for a minute. Do you want us to stay with you? No, do 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 what you do what you want to go on and do. I just need to. I, I, there's a lot to think about. Okay, um, she will do her psychic whispers. We'll try to stay within a mile. So if you need us, you can just let me know. Oh, okay. Thank you. I'm going to send Pueo over to him. <laughs> And uh, just mentally tell Pueo, just give him a little hug, would you? The best birdie. Uh, I'll, I mean, we've got the psychic link, so we'll be fine. Uh, actually, just in case you go further out of that for some reason, uh, I'll, I'll have Umbani go with all y'all, and if something dire happens, I'll have Umbani send me a particular feeling. Uh, what's one that wouldn't happen just out of the blue? Uh, a feeling of surprise, Umbani. Uh, that'll let me know that y'all need something. Alrighty, so is everyone uh, but Kira going to the shop, or is anybody else going to stay here at the Worthy Repose? Manic will go to the shop, too. Sure. So, 
Garnet, you're not only familiar with the existence of this shop, but also how to find it. And you have to assure your allies a time or two, no, no, trust me, we're doing the right thing. And all of you um, are different levels of confused. You can decide for yourself exactly where your character sits with that. As Garnet leads you beyond the edge of the city itself, she's like, no, no, trust me. And Garnet, you start walking with, and to all of you, this is very surprising, extremely heavy footfalls. Like she is literally just clomp, 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 clomp. The exact opposite of this very stealthy and nimble rogue, which you all know. And then all of a sudden, you all hear and feel this, this very soft rumbling. You look about trying to find the source of it, and it grows louder. And the ground begins to shake in a, in a tremor, and it's difficult to take a step without stumbling. And then all of a sudden, boosh, this massive metallic worm blasts out and up from the ground itself, the gears of its body rotating as its head rotates around, staring all at you, this giant toothy maw filled with hundreds of razor sharp blades open wide in this spinning cylinder of destruction. And all of a sudden you see this latch lift up and this small individual sitting in a little uh, cockpit of sorts with levers at his side goes, greetings friends. They are perchance any of you looking to make a purchase on this fine day. Allow me to introduce myself. Ernard Dippletop, and welcome to Dippletop's Tinkery. Please, step inside. And the head of this worm, boom, lands down on the ground, and this walkway extends outward as all the blades come to a rest. And you can now see beyond where this gnome is seated. Lights come up, and you can see beyond. There's a shop in there. Please, please, come in. Come in. He hops down, takes a device out of the little cockpit area, and he stows that in his pocket. And he goes running back in, in, into the shop. So he can't as, shop from outside. So as this thing erupts out of the ground, like Pohaku is like throwing an arm in front of Garnet and getting ready to cast Fireball. Um, <laughs> and then as this is all kind of going on. He just jaw drops, looks to Garnet, looks to the guy, and just takes off running <laughs> to the shop. To the shop. Yeah, I figured. I figured. Yeah, so similar for Siobhan. It's like uh, she, she's like looks at Garnet like, "Is this cool?" And then like resheeds the uh, uh, the glaive. <laughs> she was like, "Okay." It well. wouldn't have been as exciting if I told you what to expect. I nearly You're so me. right. That was awesome. <laughs> Is it better for me, Hart? Yeah, yeah. I, I nearly attacked it. Could have been awkward. Well, you did it. So let's go see what's inside. Because my DM didn't let me roll initiative. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you can't let players uh, roll initiative just for the sake of another <laughs> point. I mean, if you really wanted, I would have let you fight the clockwork worm. No, that would be very, very clockwork. Clockworm? Clockworm orange? Right. You know, in in fact, this is mostly just for flavor, but I, I think what, what may have happened is as that thing uh, came up out of the ground, mm -hmm. uh, I think Pohaku is, is it like, actually casts, uh, oh, what do I have? I don't have a lot of offensive spells prepared at the moment. I mean, you could throw a damn fireball at it and see what happens. Um, not casting the fireball at it. Uh, I will cast a, um, yeah, screw it. So I cast fireball at it, and then as soon as this guy, so, which is, hold up, hold up. So I cast the, the earthen spears 
So yeah. essentially he, you know, just is completely startled by this. Um, and as a reaction to my own spell, I am also casting counter spell as soon as I see the guy pop up out of the uh, out of the hatch. But just yeah, completely startled by this thing that is nothing like he has ever seen before. In one of the most impressive displays of magic prowess, you watch as Bahaku throws up this huge blast of arcane energy, and just just as quickly. Seeing there's someone inside of this with a very smiling face, just with his other hand, cancels it out. Uh, quite the impressive display. And as you all enter, just the inside of this massive clockwork worm, you can see just all sorts of items here for sale. Um, you can see that there is this, this bag uh, displayed. It has a buckle on it. That resembles a snow crystal. Uh, hung next to it is this very uh, intricately woven leather belt that has this large metallic buckle. Uh, you can see there is a staff. It looks like it's pieced together from pieces of wood and metal. A um, uh, you all have a wind fan, I believe. You see one similar to that, only it looks like it's um, made from sheets of metal, almost in a clockwork design. Uh, you see there is, within a, a case, this clockwork shuriken that is clicking and uh, whirring, and various other items here. It says, come on in, come on in. So, uh, what can I interest you in today? Everything here is of my own make and design. I, we have, I have a buckle shot belt, I have a beacon shuriken. Uh, an arrow of seeking, a uh, tinker's glasses, a true strike crossbow, whatever you need, I'm selling it. If you have the oh, coin. Oh, sounds amazing. Well, it is amazing. I made it. Although, I'd have to say, um, it's, I can guarantee it to be at least 80 to 90% minimum uh, uh, amazing. No refunds if it explodes. Uh, happens, happens from time to time. Just some. Don't have a chance to really field test everything I make, but they're all marvels of construction, if I do say so myself. You don't have like a bunch of folks out there doing your Q and A for you and reporting yeah. back on how well something worked. Well, uh, funnily enough, uh, I often do, and um, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. Some of them report back with glowing reviews. Some of them, a very small number report back very angry. Um, well, some don't report back at all. Let's just say if you buy something uh, real big and it makes a big boom, just be careful. But I can honestly say, I can honestly say it's been at least a year since anybody died as a result of any of my inventions. So you're probably okay. Well, it sounds like you've got a great track record. I do. Or someone's new. Um, yeah. What, so what's your most successful design? Well, the mo define most successful, as in? Most reliable, uh, balanced with most exciting. I'd also like to know what blew up the last guy. The last person who got... Uh, blown up. It was actually, and I'm working on an improved version of it right now, I had what's called the clockwork sword, you see, where it all is con continual pieces of shifting metal, and it's, I'm quite uh, proud of the invention, but apparently the enchantment I made it with, it, it wasn't, uh, well, it wasn't exactly perfect, you see, and something about the enchantment did completely fake. And they tried to use it, and when they were attacking with it, it um, well it has the ability to propulse your foes away from you when you hit them. And that enchantment wasn't exactly perfect. And the propulsion slash repulsion slash whatever you want to call it kind of went in all directions. And then the wheels are apparently... Uh, as reported by those who were there, went in all directions as well. 
So I can't say they were a dissatisfied customer, but I don't think they were a satisfied customer. But again, I have a well above 80% rating of things working A-OK -okay every time. 80% of the time it works all of the time. Sounds like they were satisfied for the rest of their lives. I, I should have you uh, write all my reviews. I like how you think. <laughs> now, if you want to know the be a bit in the yes or no, black or white, up and down, there's no middle ground with that one. That's exactly very true. Now, you're talking about what is what is my most exciting in I am a big fan of the True Strike crossbow. And he picks up this uh, crossbow, and you can see it's very, very well made. But it has it has a it has a sight on it. You can see is just kind of slightly shimmering with arcane energy. And he picks it up and he holds it and he goes, "This here, if." You use the arcane ability set within. You can set your sights on a certain foe, and it doesn't matter what they do, they can't hide from you. And if you swing the sight over them, even if they use an invisibility enchantment to hide themselves, why, this will show you exactly where they are. Even if they're behind a deep, thick fog, the whole fog will be lifted. In fact, unless you hide behind a wall itself, this will show you exactly where they are, and it'll help your bolts fly true. Now, they do have to be within 60 feet of you, and the enchantment, when activated, only lasts for a minute. But I can tell you now, it is exciting and reliable. Uh, if you're interested in buying a uh, True Strike crossbow, I could... Uh, part with one for the only tiny, tiny fee of 1,500 gold pieces. You have to be honest. I only have the one. I've just been looking for the right buyer for it. It's a, it's a mite heavy, but flies through every time. If that's uh, not so much in your budget, I do have, and he pulls this belt off the wall, the one with the big, large metal buckle on it. You ever go somewhere and they're going, oh, don't bring any weapons in here, but you know it might be a little rough and tumble and you just want to have something by your side? Well, this here is the buckle shot belt. You go ahead and you take aim and the buckle will fly off and clunk someone between the eyes and... It'll make them think twice about things. Now, you do have to go retrieve the buckle itself after it's, it's popped off there. It doesn't have any sort of uh, returning ability. I, I tried to put that sort of enchantment on there. Uh, the last one I made, it had that. And when the buckle reattached to the belt itself, well, the velocity sort of went into the chest of the person who was uh, using it. So I decided not the best enchantment to have on there, but it... Uh, you can attack somebody there. It, it'll fire about 30 feet out. Give them a good conk. I'm a fan of that one. If you have something that you need to keep filled, I've got a nice little bag of cooling here. It's it's not... Uh, well, let's see here. Yeah, and he, he looks, let's see the inside and see if there's... You know, this, this, they seem to look at a freezer and there's that like cloud of cold in there. You can see that whirling around. It's nice and chilly. It'll keep stuff. It's not extra dimensional like your bags are holding or anything like that. So what you see is what you get for the space. But I don't know if you're going somewhere and you want to keep a few snacks cool. This will work well for you. I have actually had some of the uh, monster hunters who are in the northern part of the empire where they need to harvest parts from those big scary beasties, they'll bring some of these uh, along with. A uh, bag of cooling will set you back only uh, 50 gold. I'll take How it. How much was the belt? The 100 gold. I'm going to, uh, uh, in, in Garnet's head, say, for God's sake, do not pay more than 80% for anything. 
because if that misfires, trying to just give me a wink. <laughs> if that misfires, you're gonna get shot in the cooch. Is that the episode title? Shot in the cooch. <laughs> and you're to blame. <laughs> you give belts a bad name. <laughs> I can promise you that's not going on to a t-shirt. <laughs> okay, but the kicker is, can the title be not shot in the cooch? <laughs> not in the couch. You said that they were going to take a, a bag of cooling? I mean, that just seemed <laughs> pretty cool. Oh, is, is that okay. invented an igloo cooler? Amazing. Oh, okay. hold, hold on a second. Let's see what else he's got before we like just okay. jump right in. You didn't play, hear me say play that. School. Like, like to the guy. Oh, you didn't hear me say that. Hear what at all? I didn't hear a thing. <sighs> I like him. We only hear what we need to hear. So, um, are you looking for something fun, something interesting, something dangerous? Weapons of any sorts, tools of any sorts? Uh, oh. This one's fun, and he holds up this uh, shuriken, and you can see there's this light shimmering off of it. If um, you hit someone with this, it'll extend a uh, dim light off of your target. It's great if you have someone who's trying to get away or if they're trying to hide, and if any of your allies are needing to attack the same target, this here will help make their attacks more accurate. And basically the way he explains it is the, the beacon shuriken. It, if it hits a target, dim light extends in a 10-foot radius from that target. And while that target is glowing in that way, any attack roll uh, has advantage against that target. And the target cannot become invisible while the shuriken is embedded to them. So it's the shuriken is fairy fire? It basically is, yeah. Was, um, are are any of you archers by chance? I mean, I have a crossbow, but I'm not sure if I've actually used it yet. Oh, I, I said you mean like a short bow or a long bow? Is this is an arrow we're looking at? Ah. Uh. Oh, well, I guess I guess the arrow of seeking isn't in your uh, in your future there, but that's a fun one sometime if if you want to think about that. I do also have. It, you mentioned carrying a crossbow and looks at Garnet. You look like you might know how to use a crossbow as well. If if you need a quiver that holds a bit more, I've got a nice efficient quiver here. That works well. Mm. I can also tell you're a smart one. You all seem smart. Uh, this one, now, I think the enchantment on it is, is good and solid. I hope it is, because if something goes wrong, you wear it on your head. Uh, this here cap, it's got a little lantern mounted on it, and it'll extend uh, bright light and then a little bit of dim light on there. And if you speak the command word, you can cause it to extend the light even further. If your mind is attacked while you're wearing this, it'll give you a bit of resolve. And I'll tell you, that he lets you know that the, uh, the bright mind cap it has a uh, lantern mounted on top. It casts bright light in five feet and then dim light for additional five. But if you speak the command word, it's bright light for 30 and dim for an additional 30. And if you fail an intelligence or wisdom ability check or saving throw while wearing it, you can choose to re-roll, uh, but you must use the second roll. And that property is once per day. How much is that one? Uh, that will cost 500 gold. I've only got the one. Oh, and I have this. And he holds up a small little uh, box. It's uh, six inch by 12 inches. It's a boat. No, it isn't. A boat? It's a it boat. Well, it's a, it's a folding boat. You can, you can speak a word, and it can make a small boat. You can speak a word, it'll make it a slightly bigger boat. You speak the word again, and it makes you this box. Uh, that'd be 5,000 gold. 
if you if you want one of those. Uh, I do also have a movable rod. Uh, you click it and you can't move it. Click it again and you can move it. At 2,500 gold, I'm sorry, if you want one of those. Uh, very exciting. So, what are you in the market for? I have an idea. I have a suggestion for you. What if, and I pull out my deck of illusions, I have a magical deck of cards. I'll let you draw one. If I can, if, if I can have the, 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 the uh, what was the thing you were asking about? The core that you were in? No, there was something else. Um, it was, it was, oh, it was, it, it, the, it, well, it was the five, it was 500. It was the thing with the, the saving throw, the intelligence saving throw. Oh, the bright mind cap. That's yeah. the one. I will let you draw a card. I don't know what's going to do, but I'll let you draw a card if I can have the cap. Are you are you holding the deck where you can see it? Um, I I am. Okay. He looks the uh, deck over and he pulls this small monocle out of his pocket. And he... I've never seen anything like that before. That's it's a very fancy, fan fascinating deck. I'm going to decline, seeing as I can tell it's a, it's a very temporary thing I get out of it. But that's a fun thing you have. Don't, 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 don't go wasting those cards on just anybody. What if you got to draw two cards? I'll be honest with you, I wouldn't trade it for even the entire deck. There, there is a deck I've heard about. But if you were ever to find it, no. and, you brought, and you brought it to me, I need quite the trade for it. Do not give this fool that deck. Okay, no I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> if you ever find some magical decks of cards, you you let me know. Now, I found a magical deck of cards. Well, not not that one, but keep your eyes out for more. There's this one's supposedly a one of a kind deck and can do many great and wonderful things, but also many great terrible things. My goodness, do I want my hands on that? Yeah, that's kind of interesting. Can you all imagine how soon this game would be if Paul was not that deck? Just done. Stop. Well, yeah, fine. and now you all know that it exists in this game. What a way to go. <laughs> mm. That's okay. You guys never found it in the last campaign, so who knows if you'll find it in this one. I mean, I you know. I casually beat it off the cliff. Probably. Oh. Nope. Anyway, so Siobhan's had, like, one foot out the door ever since this dude said that she needs a <laughs> of everything, you know, was likely to explode. <laughs> Every time he touches something, she kind of winces. It's like just waiting for this to be the thing. So, friends, is there anything that's caught your eye? Pohaku so seems to be interested in a cooler, uh, a bag of cooling. I just think it's neat. I will also say you look like a powerful adventuring type. I do have a deal that can be made. Um, <laughs> I have a funny story to tell. Funny story. So here's what happened. I was creating a mechanical beast. Now you see the clockwork worm I created. The crowning achievement of all my inventions. I wanted to see if I could replicate something so amazing that I didn't have to pilot. So I was making this manticore out of metal and clockwork 
and it was a marvel of construction, if I do say so myself. But unfortunately, it malfunctioned before it was finished. And no. I was surprised too. It set off in Manix, that was rude. Oh, wait, sorry. Shooting Force spikes of in some various different directions. Um, I'm not well prepared for hunting flying creatures, you see, as the wings on it work just fine. But the clockwork worm here works best of things underground or on the ground. So, if you could hunt this uh, manticore down and stop it, I will give you a store credit of 500 gold. And if you can bring it back without destroying it, I'll give you a store credit of 1,000 gold. Because I'd love to finish this. Um, you'll have to decide quickly if it's a thing you could decide you want to do, because I will be honest. There was another group of uh, five adventurers that uh, came through recently. I offered this uh, deal to quite the, quite the interesting source, their, their leader. She was quite uh, vociferous. Uh, elven archer she was. But uh, We're aware. Well, you know the low elves. Yeah, we had to save their asses uh, a little while ago. You might want to consider just giving us a better deal, like 50% more than what you're offering them, and we'll actually get it done for you. Make a persuasion check. Let me know if I fail it. Oh, I probably failed it. Um, 16? 16? I like your style. Fifty percent is pushing it a little bit. I won't lie. So I'll say this: if you can stop it, six hundred gold store credit, and if you bring it back in one piece, twelve fifty. Best I can do. I think that's fair. Great. You guys up for some mechanical manticore hunting? We'll get a little bit more information about this manticore and what it's capable of. That's a fair request. I'd um, rather know what kind of a blast furnace I'm about to stick my hand in before I get it blown clean off my body. It's funny you say furnace. It can breathe fire. Oh, fucking hell. It can uh, see here. It can breathe fire. It can, it can shoot spikes out of its tail. Uh, sometimes those are poison spikes. Watch out sometimes? for that. Sometimes? Some, well, it's... The, the enchantment on the poison for the spikes, it's a little kinky. I didn't get a chance to finish it when it went bounding off. I was in the middle of working on that. It can fly uh, quite fast, I might say. And it's surprisingly quiet. That enchantment, I got worked perfectly. The, the gears make almost no noise. So be careful, it'll sneak up on you. So he made a Tesla. <laughs> no, because this actually mostly works. Something more for a, like a Prius. Can you pay eight dollars for a little icon on it that makes it work better? <laughs> pay eight dollars for a little icon, but it's not necessarily going to make it work any better at all. If nothing else, it's going to ensure that it's essentially a cheap knockoff. <laughs> any chance we're still within a mile of Kira? Oh, definitely. Kira, you hear from Garnet in your head. Yeah. We, 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 we found a really fun job that would totally take your mind off of everything that's going on. Um, and she'll give him some coordinates. Why don't you meet us around this place and we can uh, tell you about the super cool mechanical manicure that we're going to go hunting for? Uh, uh, what? Uh, I'll just get the explanation when I'm there. A magical. Mm hmm. Yep. I'll. Yeah. And Kira yeah, will start to. Yeah, we can't do this without you. Uh, Kira will start to bundle up uh, all of his. Uh, bundle up all of his uh, papers that he had out. Uh, with just a bunch of uh, a bunch of them just crumpled up and thrown across the room. Uh. He's trying to write a letter to Sordol, and he can't figure out what to say. Uh, 
and he'll head over. I am so thrilled you are willing to take upon this uh, this this challenge. I'm now again. If if you and the elves, if you decide you are going to work together on something, I'm not I'm not paying both on this. I would just just going to pay one. You can decide how that credit goes amongst all of you. <laughs> I I know I know business, so just you're not going to pull one over on old Dipplesoft here. I can see you're a very smart gnome. Um, how would you feel about a loaner for this job? Not a purchase, but just, you know, check something out and, uh, you know, test it before we purchase it um, and or it would help us get your thing back. I'm listening. I'd be interested in trying out the immovable rod. It might help us um, get your device back without Abbott having to destroy it. Hmm. Immovable rod? Yeah, he said an immovable rod. Oh, well, that's actually useful. Unless he made it. I'll tell you what I'll do then. I'm willing to allow that, but I'm going to let you know straight and up front what I'm going to do. I'm going to place an enchantment on that rod, two things. If you dispel or break the enchantment, I'll know, and I'll come find you. And if you don't return the rod, I'll come find you. And if we have to renegotiate this while I'm inside the clockwork worm here, I'm in a very different temperament. Now, I'm, I don't say this in an accusatory way, so please do not misunderstand. Because if I didn't trust you at all, I wouldn't let you walk out of here with it. But he takes the rod, spins it between his fingers, and he extends it to you, Garnet. But, as I can tell, you're a gnome who appreciates creativity like I am. I'm willing to trust you. And he waves his fingers over it, and you watch it light up briefly with its enchantment before going back to itself. He goes, best of luck to you. Why don't we say... If you don't find the mana core within three days, come back here and return the rod. Three days is reasonable. How long ago did you lose it? I lost it about two days ago. I was making some great progress and just put a little too much juice into it, I think, and off it went. <laughs> what direction? I went east. Uh, it was. It was easy to find at first. Uh, I don't know where it's at now. I tried to track it down. Uh, the first thing I did was follow the screens. And uh -huh. if wildlife becomes eerily quiet, be worried. Uh, thing about this thing is being that it's mechanical, it has no predators. And it thinks it is a predator. I was trying to make it as lifelike as possible, but again, before I could get all the command systems programmed in, we had, well, oopsie. Oops. Why didn't you start there? I had to completely build its instincts first. Have to get the instincts there before you can go, okay, don't always go for these, and yeah. Tinkering is a, it's a funny thing of just how quickly something can go wrong, but we know it works. Yes, we do. Is everything you make super custom and like one-off, um, or do you have any sort of like mass production capabilities? Ooh. Everything I do is handmade. I wouldn't, wouldn't trust the process to anyone else. And also, it's just too much fun. So I keep it as small as possible in operating it myself. Plus, most things I make, it's when the inspiration strikes me. So if an idea comes, I just have to start building it. So I'm not building. What am I doing? Well, I guess selling is what I'm often doing. But the building is the most fun. But... 
if you ever have an amazing idea for something to build, let me know. I'm always looking for new thoughts, new ideas, things, things to build, things to create. He looks over at Siobhan. You, you know about making things, don't you? Why do you assume that? He looks you up and down. Well, judging from your build, the calluses on your hands there, that hammer I see you wearing, and a little bit of uh, soot I can see near the cuff of your pants there. Uh, I know the look of somebody who's worked to forge, who knows how to smith. I respect that. It's hard work. It's impressive. Hats making something, well, some would say out of nothing. Not out of nothing. You're taking something and making it into something else. That's impressive. I like that. Nice, and nothing explodes. Most of the time, it doesn't explode. But think about this. Have you ever seen someone who, they make a blade, and when that blade goes to be used, the blade breaks, and they find out there's something wrong with it they just could have never known? Right, it's an inclusion. Boom! Think of that as an inclusion. <laughs> Same thing. Same thing when you think about it. Yeah, In fact, man. that's what I'm going to start calling them, inclusion. No, how did he dare? No. You're right. It makes it sound a bit like a benefit, doesn't it? And we're certainly not. Well, it's just, it's a possibility. What fun is life without a little mystery? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Puleo. Surprise, Puleo. <laughs> I should give one more warning about the manticore. If, if you were to destroy it, um, it's got a funny thing built into it. <laughs> Does it yeah, explode? How would you guess? Why are very, we in the dark? Very much explodes. So, um, be careful. I wish I could say it had a off button or simple kill switch. I tried that. Kill switch exploded. Thankfully, I wasn't hurt too bad. He holds up his left hand. You can see there's some gauze wrapped around the palm. Nasty burn, but I'll be okay. Learn from my mistakes. <laughs> the black powder, yes. <laughs> I have an idea. And I, 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 I say this to you, to him. You, you, you said if, if I have ideas. Yes, please. I have an idea. Um, it, it's just something, something little. Like I, I, don't, I don't need it. I don't need it to shoot spikes or fire. Can you do to, like? I am a champion, so I understand pride of craftsmanship. Do you? you can can you make just like a like mundane items too? I can. I kind of do that in my spare time. Could you? And I'm going to minor illusion a uh, image of Mbani. Can you make one of these? Do you just? Need it, you know, it'll perch and not move, or do you want it to be fully, full automaton? I can make it automaton. Oh you no, it doesn't need to be in it. Oh, and Bonnie's with us. Yeah. Oh, pardon. Yeah. So I don't need. So okay, I just, I, I don't do minor illusion. I just point to Bonnie. Um, can, I don't know, just like, you know. Uh, you, you seem to be good with with like the clock stuff, 
that I don't really understand. I'm actually pretty good with woodworking, but not like this. So if like you could just make something kind of neat. You just want one of those? Looks like that doubles as a clock. I can do that. You can make it into a clock. Yeah. That's a, I mean, yes, that's hey. what I mean. Bird clock, no problem. Kind of, do you want it to adjust its time if you go into a different time zone as as you travel? That enchantment will cost you more. You just want to wind that and do that by hand. Either way, I can do both. Just depends on how much you want me to put into it. I think I think the owner would enjoy doing it themselves. So we I don't think we need the automatic piece. Make it in an afternoon. Come back uh come back as soon as tomorrow. I can make it for you. Top spin. We'll call it for expenses. I'll make it for you for ten gold. Okay. Or I, and then I instantly look over to Garnet. Is that okay? That's a really good idea, Clocker. Okay. Yes. If we come back with okay. somebody else in our party, will you keep it a secret? I understand. Without question. Unless you say anything, I don't know anything about it. I have a better idea for the price. Oh? We stop this abomination that you've uh, let loose on the countryside. We don't Invention? Tell, we don't tell anyone that you're responsible. And you give it to them for second free. I, hear, I don't totally understand. People know it's one of my creations. I'm directly seeking out people to go... Oh. Get it. I, I'm, I'm not looking to keep a secret. It's, then why are you not incarcerated? I am a master inventor and tinkerer. Who let loose something that can breathe fire and poison spikes on the populace? You say let loose. I say whoopsie. Just off it went. I didn't sick it on anybody. I didn't say, oh, go, cause some damage. I was mid-work. Magic being what magic does went whoopsie and off it went. Whoopsie. I think I think that's gotta be the episode title. I wouldn't call okay. it letting loose, I would call it whoopsie. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to be a poor craftsman who doesn't put his stuff in such a point where it won't do such a thing. But what do I know? If working with magic was easy in terms of tinkering, everyone would do it. I looked over to Maddox. You know coffee pretty good. <laughs> yeah, my coffee's not going off and needs to be recovered for 1,500 gold or whatnot. Would you like it to be? I would not. I can make you a deadly percolator. Oh, that's the perco awesome. I could make you an automaton with big, powerful fists. The percolating pugilist it would be. <laughs> I don't think you're good at making things that are going to run off on me. Do you not leave the... Uh... Well, that, I mean, would only happen if whoopsie, and, I mean, what are the chances? I mean, it wouldn't be any more than 20% um, chance. I, I don't know. Those are pretty good odds, right? Those are amazing odds. If you were out wagering money and you had an 80% chance to win, you'd wager left, right, and center because you know you'd be raking it in. So I'm about to punch something. He does have a he he does have a point. I mean, that's how math works. It is how the math works. I have two more questions before we go hunting. Um, the first one is, how much does this thing weigh? And the second one is, is there an off switch? The kill switch blew up. Weighs the shitload? And no. Okay. Um, because I, when you want to create a beast of this nature, to have its own sentient existence and everything, you can't just have people walking up willy-nilly going click and just turn off whenever. Besides, 
can you imagine how bad it would be if that thing was flying and somebody just went click and it's now not working? You would have a massive amount of metal and magic and serration plummeting out of the sky. Can you imagine if that landed on someone? Terrible it would be. More than a whoopsie. So we don't want that happening now, do we? And is it powered by arcane or electrical oh, clockwork? Arcane is- clockwork, just like everything I make, just like the clockwork worm here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. Anyone else have any questions or things they need to know before we uh, head out? We should probably catch up with Siobhan and find Kira. Okay. Now, what's your favorite color? Uh, me? I've never been asked that before. My favorite color is gold, but I don't mean gold as in metal or the value when you watch the sunrise and it goes from those beautiful pinks and purples and lavenders and just begins to show as the shining sun itself that gold. That's my favorite color, because it means it's a new day. Gold is indeed a beautiful color. I've heard it often referred to as nature's hardest color, hardest hue to hold. Um, That's a good answer. I like you all. You're delightful. I hope I, I see more of you. Lot. I think you will. Now, be very safe. Be very careful. Where's my head at? I almost forgot. Oh, an important thing. Your head to... too? We have to find that now? No. Not <laughs> yet. Thank goodness. <laughs> an important thing about hunting this musical is you need to know. This may be the most important thing. Don't think you can get the drop on it and do a little bit, wear it down and wait and find it again. It works very slowly, but it's been designed to self-repair. Important to know. It needs to be dormant to do the self-repair. So if you engage with it, you're not going to see it, you know, cruising on itself like some sort of terrifying undead menace, but it gets a chance to lie low and lay dormant. Those wounds will close up quite quickly. It's a fine piece of craftsmanship, if I can say so myself. Like you almost thought of everything. Look off on you now, is it? <laughs> Question, Jesus. Okay, and try to, try to shuffle Mannix out before he completely offends uh, her new best friend. Um, <laughs> Kohaku, he's not really my best friend. Um, but, yeah. I know. <laughs> All right, so less than three days, we'll be back. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. I can't wait to see uh, and hear what all happens. Um, don't get blown up. And I do hope you're able to bring it back still functioning, as I really think, really think with just a little bit more work, I can have it working perfectly. We'll do our best. Also, if you have any sort of trinkets or anything that can detect lies or uh, force people to tell you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, you better use it on uh, that crazy elf and her group, because I guarantee you, they're not going to be able to take this thing down, and they will try to take credit for someone else. Just they a did, warning. They seemed a little boastful. I wasn't entirely sure, but they left here with a loud, hearty huzzah, so. That doesn't mean anything. Hmm. Who knows? They might already be Manticore Chow. Uh, let's hope so. I mean, like, let's not hope so, but, um, yeah. It, it just might mean they might learn their lessons, that's all. 
Ohaku looks at him very seriously, like straight in the eye, just based on, on what Garnet is saying here. The pretty one, Preet, is not to be trusted. Oh, that's that gentleman that was uh, with them. Not to be trusted. Not to be trusted. Well, <laughs> keep Aww. in mind. Keep in mind. I'll just also be honest with you. Everyone's gold spends the same here. So if if they're buying, I'm probably not arguing too much. Not gonna lie to you. I wouldn't want to, you know, um, deny you customers. I would just want you to. Um, not get taken for a ride by those customers. Woe to anyone who uh, hoodwinks or dipple top here and he kong kong the wall next to him of the body of the clockwork worm. I'm very impressed. Okay, let's go. Quit back! Don't die! And don't get blown up. Both would be bad. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> so, oh. can we start hunting now? Uh, in the meanwhile, Shabon was outside uh, trying to figure out exactly how solid the uh, metalwork was on this worm that she assumes they're going to have to fight at some point. <laughs> Go ahead and make either, um, I guess we're going to call this a Smith's Tools check. So you can add proficiency plus, since you're observing it, I'm going to say proficiency plus wisdom on this. D20, add your proficiency modifier and your wisdom mark. Okay, where the heck is my proficiency mod? Um. Where is my proficiency mod? Uh, your proficiency mod right now, I believe, is a plus three. Okay. Uh, 16 plus 19 plus... Or 16 plus... Uh, 21. 21. So looking over this construction, you can see that the metal used for it is extremely high quality. This is well-tempered steel. Um, it wouldn't be hard to land a blow on this creature, being massive as it is. You don't know how well mundane weapons would do against such a creation. It's, it looks like it'd be big and scary if you had to fight it. As it is, you were just inside of it and it was a shop. This thing is gargantuan like both in uh, size category and in terms of how you would describe it. This thing is all kinds of uh, gargantuan. Has Kira shown up yet? Yeah, I would say by this point, he's probably gotten there. There was enough conversation and whatnot happening inside. What in the nine hells? When <laughs> Javon turns around, Looking kind of glowy around the eyes. <laughs> it's like, there's a fucking madman inside who made another one of these that's a manticore, lost control of it, and, if things weren't bad enough, gave the fucking contract to, to, uh, to track it down to the low elves. So, that's what we're currently dealing with. I mean, everyone makes mistakes, you know. Whoopsie. Exactly. Whoopsie. Why is it here so forgiven of all the absolute suckers that we meet? Have you never needed to be forgiven for a mistake? Certainly, but you're harsh to us. Or me. And an absolute sucker, you're like, well, you know. Everyone accidentally, occasionally will let out a, a, a mechanical manticore that shits poison darts. I'm sorry, it what? So you weren't exaggerating when you said a metal manticore, for one. Um, no. I wonder if you feel allowed to operate, to operate here, or is it more just that no one can get him out of the second worm? 
because it seems all sorts of illegal, frankly. I mean, it's not really my specialty, so we'd have to ask someone more locally. It's not uncommon where I'm from. Yeah, I'm very afraid to go to uh, uh, the Glimmer Shore now. I've been saying, not the Glimmer Shore, um, Gizmopolis now. Is it just is it just this times like a million? It's amazing. Yeah. The innovation that you find there, you're not going to find anywhere else. Right, and how many things explode on a daily basis? Not an unreasonable amount. So I'm hearing 20 Precautions are taken. Ugh. We have good emergency services. Uh, so which way did it go? So happy. Apparently, with the file of the screen, or the trail of dead. Yeah, she was quite the conversation. I had to leave before I started hitting things. I. Okay, so we need to find and stop this thing just out of a necessity of keeping people safe, but. What? Kira, guess what? I got uh, a loner immovable rod. See this button? If you press it, it can hold something in place that's 8,000 pounds or less, which is amazing. Um, but I don't get close to things, so maybe you want to hold on to this and see if there's a creative way to use it to get the thing to stop without um, destroying it, because we get more if we don't destroy it. Oh, by the way, we're doing this for store credit. What? You said it was a magical item shop? Yeah. By a madman that 20% uh, of the time blows things up. Always on the negative side. You know what? Let, let, let's let just go find this thing. Because if I think more about it, I'm just... My brain's already maxed. <laughs> Let's just go have a fight. I see this as an incredible problematunity. Did I just have a stroke? Quit making up words. Quit making up words. Problematunity makes me happy. <laughs> that, that's, the, that's the title. Problematunity. Oh. Uh. For a typo of step, you said it out loud. <laughs> so we don't really have any guidance on where to start looking for this thing, except where people are screaming. It has a two-day head start going east, um, and we shouldn't. Uh, we should get real worried if everything in the forest goes quiet. Just so you know. Feel comfortable with everything is in the quiet in, in the forest in general. That's that mm -hmm. doesn't help. And it can heal itself. Why did he make this thing? What if it had worked and been under his control? All of that amazing power? That much amazing power if you can't control it. Sometimes I think Garneth's the only one who understands the genius of some of these NPCs. <laughs> It just seems that like scare you. <laughs> it just seems like a good amount of risk for not a whole lot of reward. But also, Actually, these things, as described, like a whole legion of them could turn an entire tide in a skirmish. So, eh. well, let's go stop it. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. So as you all leave this shop and decide you're going to go try and find and stop this creature, uh, would somebody like to give me a survival check to try and hunt this thing? Not it. Um, I think we might have to survive it. I'd love to. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> angry. It's just... A constant stream of cursing, basically. 
I've got a plus four to survival if anyone wants me to make that check. Yes. Oh, I'll totally do it. I have a minus one, but I'll totally do it. Is anyone else proficient in survival? If someone else is proficient, I'll allow them to help Reba so that she can roll at advantage. Otherwise, one other person can also have their own roll. So two people can roll on their own, or if you have someone else proficient, you can have advantage. But I don't imagine that y'all I'll like, do it. Yeah, survival. I do. All right. Reba and Pahaku. Mm, that is bad news. <laughs> Three. Yes. Nine for me. Nine. Um, you know, Reba, you're not a tracker in any way, shape, or form, but you're going to give it your best whirl. And so you, you think back to some of the individuals you ran with, what they were doing if they were trying to follow someone or something, and you do all... This way, and as you very confidently start striding off in that direction, it doesn't take long before you find yourself at the gates of the city of virtue. And you stop, you turn around 180 degrees, and very confidently go this way, and you begin traipsing off eastward into the woods as you very clearly saw a sign that said, Virtue, Eastern Gate. I'm like, ah, it was just, it was just getting my bearings, making sure I knew which way was east. That away we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, for the first part of the tracking of this, I need someone to roll a d20 for me, and let's see what you get. I'll do it. Eighteen. Eighteen. So the worst number. (laughs) All right. So a Dracolich appears. No. (laughs) (laughs) Don't do me like that. That's the worst. I could have done one of those before. (laughs) No, I wouldn't do it. It's just whatever you roll, that is the CR of the creature you're about to fight. No. My dude, I already have high blood pressure. Don't do this to me. <laughs> <laughs> so the the weather is quite calm, and you find that's very helpful. You don't have too much wind in, in the trees um, causing too much additional noise to mess with any sort of tracking. Um, Reba is very clearly doing her best. None of you think she's doing poorly. She's she's trying. You're but you're moving a bit slow because again, Reba, you don't really know tracking, so you're just taking extra time. Where you're you you look at it, what is like a wildlife trail for a bit, you're, and then eventually you kind of go, no, this would not be the path of a giant metallic manticore, and yeah, exactly. See, so you you press on as as best you can. It's starting to get um, a bit towards evening now because it was like I said about tea time. Uh looks like Baku. Yeah, just as we are we are walking um in directions that I am fully confident are the right directions. Um just as we're we're going um Pohaku is going to uh walk over to Siobhan and tap her on the shoulder. I don't want another lecture about how no fun. Thanks. Well, that's not what I was gonna say, but okay. I'll go over to Garnet instead, and I will give Garnet gift of alacrity. So Garnet now has advantage <laughs> on initiative for the next eight hours uh, for the first one. Uh, or no, pardon, not advantage. You add a D8 to your initiative roll. Pardon. D8. Okay. Something that can be quite useful. Or can you know end up not doing anything when you you know roll a one on your initiative and a roll on the alacrity. Not that that's ever happened to me, but I digress. <laughs> so pressing on, it's getting on towards evening. It's getting you know a bit darker. Uh, sun's starting to go down a bit. You guys want to keep hunting 
a little bit longer, see if you come across this thing. The sun sure, down. why not? Love it. Gonna need someone else to roll a either nature or survival check on this. Oh, I'm much better at nature, but I already rolled on the first one. I'll go with nature. I, you, like two, two people can, or one people, can, one person can with advantage here. Like Bahaku, you can roll again on this one because you're looking for different things now. It's starting to get dark. Okay. I can't see. Fifteen for Garnet on nature. Now twenty twenty-five. Nice. So, Garnet, you start thinking about a couple things you were told. One, that this thing can fly. And two, listening for wildlife to be quiet. So you are specifically listening to the sounds of birds. Because if it's in the air, that'd be the first thing you hear going quiet. And Bahaku, you start thinking, if this thing has no predators, but it still has some predatory instincts, it may be from above looking for a target that it can come down at. So you're using the trees for cover as much as possible as you listen about trying to hear where the wildlife becomes more quiet and then realizing you may have to go into a bit of a clearing to try and draw it down if you can see it. And it begins to press on a little further into the evening. It's getting towards the tail end of sunset. Those of you without dark vision aren't hosed yet, <laughs> but you're getting close. And with that natural 20 there, Haku, there comes a point where all of a sudden you just kind of push your hand up, stopping everyone. And you listen. And as you listen, you find it has become eerily quiet. And yeah, Reba, with your passive perception, you start looking about, you look to Hohaku, you look off to your right, you just kind of give him a, and he nods, you know, that way. And you can see this clearing just ahead of you at the edge of this tree line you're in. And with what little light there is, you watch as across the clearing, this shadow goes across it of something clearly flying in the air. And you look up and it's obscured a bit by your, you know, the sun is setting behind you and you have trees blocking a lot of that sunlight. So it's kind of hard to see what this form is flying through the air. But at one point, you unmistakably catch what looks like a metallic glint off of this light. It flies over some trees off in the distance from you opposite this clearing. You appear to have found your quarry. Uh, uh, absolutely. That, that, found it. Found it. Okay, we found it. Don't get cooked, everyone. Reba, with your passive perception, you notice something else. As you look down around you, you pick up an arrow. You're looking at the fletching no. on it. No, don't do this to me. And you go, you look to your allies, you know this is one of Sindel's arrows. Ah. Don't know how long ago it was fired, but unquestionably, this is the same kind of fletching you saw on her other arrows. You guys, Sindel's already been here. Oh, I don't want to deal with her. Quite likely did. That would be a relief. And the thing's just up, flying around. It's not like been engaged. 
It doesn't look like it's currently engaged with anything. It's just kind of flying for a bit. Every now and then, it sort of like dips down among the tree line. Just kind of, it kind of looks like it's in sort of a, a hunting pattern. Well, the question is, now that we've found it, do we engage it tonight, or because it kind of looks like this is its hunting grounds? We wait till the morning and fight it in the daylight. Something like this in the nighttime does not sound like an idea. Yeah. Having trouble seeing. Like I do want to try. Yeah, I kind of having trouble seeing. Well, I can see while the light's still, the sun's still up. But after that, I don't see in the dark. Do we know? And I'm. I guess it doesn't actually matter. I'm going to ask the, those of you who know uh, wildlife better, but we have no way of knowing where it's going to stay, do we? Uh, anyone who wants to could roll a nature check on that to see what you know about manticores. Yes. 18. 18. I got so 18 with that, as well. nice. So, Pahaku, you from living in the Whispering Wood and knowing how large predatory creatures be, and you, Kira, from reading books, you too know. But a creature like this, if it ends its hunt, it will go back to some sort of lair or nest or whatever it's made up for itself. And that when it goes to hunt on a, a new day, if one area was not fruitful for hunting, it's not likely to return there if there's a lack of prey. So you would sort of be hoping that it found prey in this area either recently or fairly regularly, but otherwise it would probably go on to a new place to hunt. So we could... There's no guarantee that it'll come back here after it goes to its lair to sleep, and if it is programmed like a regular manticore is then unless it found something good here it wouldn't come back so it sounds like we do this now before we run out of light or we can try and trust that we can track it again tomorrow we know it'll at least be in this relative area because it probably wouldn't hunt too far away from where it nests down. How long could it possibly take? We can bring it down before sunset. I have an idea. The full moon today? Hmm. I'm going to um, kind of... So we're, we're underneath trees right now? Yes. So Pohaku just kind of walks over to one of the trees, kneels down, and something that you've all noticed um, is that a couple more tattoos showed up on him over the past few days. Um, there are, on both of his wrists, looks like just a series of, of rings, uh, just lines um, kind of leading up his uh, each of his wrists. And then on his uh, right pectoral, is um, three stylized um, tattoos that look a little bit like him, but it's just like these three figures of a person. Um, he is going to kneel down next to one of the trees, and you see him making some gestures and murmuring some words, and the tattoos, the rings uh, on his forearm start pulsing in like this vibrating pattern. He is casting Sending, and he is casting it on the construct. I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm going to give it a shot. Cool. I love where your head is at. That's where your Let me check something. Because 
that is a incredibly interesting use of a spell. Hmm. Um, does that work? However, that is, by the way, all three of my third level spells today because I cast a fireball and then counterspelled it earlier. Push it. So, sending simply says a creature. This falls under creature. It's it's a creature. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's creature type is construct. Um, has to creature hears the messages, recognizes you as the sender if it knows you, and and it can answer in a like manner. Um, enables the with an intelligence of at least one to understand the meaning. Yeah, there's no reason you can't do this. There is no reason you can't. I just had to double check the spell cool. as it. I was not. yeah, I was going through it a few times myself to see and it's like I think this could work. So it yeah, it works. So yeah, uh, please um, send send your your message. So yeah, he just uh, reaches out. Hey, where are you going? Your creator misses you and would like you to come back. Big guy. Sun's getting Sun's real getting low. Real low. <laughs> it takes a moment before you get response. And you're actually kind of surprised by this. Um, you do, in fact, get one. I hunt. I hunger. I exist. And must thrive. My creator gave me life, but I must learn to live. And that's all it says. So, hard to, now this doesn't go back to it because I don't have the spell slot to send it again, but right. he just says out loud, yeah, I get that. Um, and we'll respond, we'll, we'll pass this on to, to everybody as far as what he's heard. So yeah, it wants, it wants to hunt, it wants to learn. Um, that's, that's, it just wants to learn. And squeak, it's, 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 it's boss. <laughs> It's, it's so like, cute. Oh, the forest doesn't Sorry. seem as silent anymore. <laughs> so, the first squeak happened after uh, it said to be scary. So I was like, hey, Hmm. Huh. So, I mean, it doesn't, at least from that, it doesn't sound like there's any real convincing it to just go back nicely. No, it, it, it's it's alive now. It wants to it wants to learn. Well, then I guess we should get somewhere visible and look tasty. I mean, we could do that, or right, and I'll just cast this right at my feet, and I'll just cast a minor image, five foot cube of like just a pile of like. I don't know, something from the woods, some sort of exotic animal corpse. So with where you're at, you're just within this tree line. So you would be casting this like down underneath the cover. This is not too lure. This is as a response to instead of us going out for it. Gotcha, gotcha. Just, just want to make sure. Like, Mike, are you trying yeah. to lure it right, right the fuck? No, no, you guys are no. like, I'll roll a perception check. Do you think you'd be more likely to be drawn by one of your cards, something bigger? I don't know. Don't know what the card is going to be. Oh, good. It could be something real big. It could be something real small. Be interesting to try. We can certain, as 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 one of my local shamans once said, we can certainly try. Yep. So y'all know I'm dead useless against this unless it lands. 
I mean, I'm not against using either the using either your cards or the the smaller illusion to draw it in. I think those are both great ideas. Uh, I just, again, I don't know how great of an idea it is fighting it in this waning light. Well, once it's down, um, in fact, I haven't, I've got another idea. Um, I'm going to just look for like a twig. Um, and then I will also take out of my backpack, oh, I don't know, something that is, I don't know, like just a spare set of, you know, cloak or, or whatnot, uh, and cover it up, and I will cast light on the twig underneath the, uh, the cloak. It's like, all you have to do is toss this out. Should light it up nice for you. That would absolutely help. Well, once it's down, going for the for the for the for the for the bodies, um, just hand me the immovable rod. I'll jump onto it and hold it down. Uh, That's kind of the point, right? And then, and then what? And then we hit it without breaking it. Right, but I don't. I'm not clear on a how we knock it out without making it explode, and also how we then get it back to um, the madman. How far away are we from from where he is? Ah, uh, you've traveled for a few hours, and I imagine you had had some conversation on the way here that Garnet would have let you all know. Finding the shop is really a matter of being nearby where it is and making enough noise on the ground to interest the clockwork worm to come up. Also, the immovable rod does have an enchantment on it where he knows where you are. So if you are going back in that direction, he can track you all. So you would know rendezvousing wouldn't be too hard. And Siobhan, you would also know and theorize, like as you say it out loud, about how do we, you know, incapacitate as opposed to destroy this thing. You, you kind of think to yourself and you, you go, no, I'm, I'm a pretty capable warrior. I can, I can use them. I, I would honestly say for flavoring stuff for the sake of what you're attempting here, rather than make it impossible, you would still roll the same thing for damage, but I would allow it to be, quote, non-lethal for lack of a better term, where you're like, I'm trying to incapacitate it, not completely destroy it. So, yeah. Well, we'll kind of fudge that, because I don't want to make it overly complicated, where it's like, ha, 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 you did this, and now it explodes when you weren't trying to. It's a possibility, depending on what you do, but if you're trying to incapacitate it versus destroy, depending on what attacks and shit you do, it's plausible and very possible. Pretend all this conversation happened before we got there. <laughs> yes. Well, okay. On the on the line of transporting it, what if we render it inoperable, put the immovable rod like somewhere in it or on it so it can't move, and then do some of your uh, tel- telepathy magic to just let him know that well, it's here and it can't move. You can do that. I can also summon up some platforms to help us move it a little if we need to. You can what? You've seen me do it before. Oh, right. Right. You might need a couple of them. That thing's pretty big. Yeah. Okay. If anyone has a gem worth at least 50 gold, I could possibly get it to just follow us somewhere. Well, we've got Garnet. Nah, Any of them? Priceless. <laughs> I suppose maybe one thing at a time. I mean, the first thing we need to do is to get it down and knock it out. So once we do that, we'll figure out how to move it. Okay. 
So I, I look to Garnet and um, hold out my hand for the immovable rod. Um, and then I'll also look over to Siobhan. I'm happy to do it. You want to do it? The rod. You're faster. Wait. Okay. That's not true. Hold on. <laughs> Out of character. I don't know if that's true. No, actually, it'd be better if you did because I'm a uh, I'm better at drones. Drawn its focus, I think. Okay. Yeah, you do insane things. I protect everyone. That seems to be the balance of uh, duties. <laughs> duties. Duties. We're adults. Oh, Penix, I knew you had a sense of humor. We just needed to go with poop jokes. Now I know. This is such a breakthrough. I, I feel great. Tasks, I just think tasks are hilarious. We need to. Hmm. Well, then so let's plan? try and draw its attention. I mean, honestly, it's a coin flip whether we use one of the cards or use uh, just your innate illusion magic. Well, it said that it and wanted. That fireworks. It said that it wanted yes, you to do. Hunt. And if I use an illusion, it would just be of, you know, like a body. So if it's looking to hunt, then yeah, I guess we could try the uh, the deck and give it something to hunt. Hopefully it's something big. We'll find out soon. Yeah. Look at the card before you throw it. I don't think it works that way. It does not work that way. All right. Apologies. That's okay. I forgive you. Well, then. See, I do that with you too. <sighs> and I cast mage armor. <laughs> Probably a good idea. <laughs> Garnet's going to ask where you're going to throw it and get in position and hide. Yeah, so I, I figure we're looking for a clearing. You look at roll 20, I see a nice big one. You guys are at the uh, yeah. the edge of one. Are we going to use that? I mean, that was if, if there is a sure. that happens here, that's the one I was planning on using. Okay. I'll make sure it's ready for the people to see. Because <sighs> we can do that. No. So what are y'all doing? Um, if I can, um, if everyone's going to be over there, I will... And let me know if I need to roll for this or something, but I think I'd like to go over to the other set of trees. Sure. So what happened here is that I forgot to set up our recording program to record our audio along with this map uh, because I did the same dumb thing that we did uh, back in the original like first couple of episodes when uh, we didn't have everything set up right. And then I did this again because I don't learn from my mistakes. So what you're missing here is that we're setting up on the map where we're about to ambush uh, and get this mecha uh, chimera uh, to or mecha manticore to attack us. Uh, and eventually, uh, Pohaku thinks up the plan to use that uh, deck of illusions, and we summon a creature, and then the Mecha Manticore comes down to fight it in this clearing. And then we end the episode right before we roll initiative. Uh, so that's what happens. Uh, I, My bad for messing up the audio for this and cutting the episode a little bit short. Uh... But you'll see this fight and all that it entails next week, and we'll see what chaos awaits. <laughs>